Hello everyone, I am Jake of uh, JT Gaming. A lot of you will know me from JT Gaming, but uh, a lot of you won't and will be uh, just looking at this video after searching or whatever. So, uh, basically in this video, I'm going to be talking about why I like to uh, game on my PC rather than on consoles. Now, before I get started, I just want to let you know that what I'm saying in this, um, it's it's not opinion. Uh, what Everything I say is based on fact. I'll be backing it up. Um, Personally, I have no problem at all with people that um, that play on consoles, or I don't have any problem with consoles or anything like that. I have more of a problem with the people, the, the PC games that think they're above everyone else think, or oh, console games are idiots, because a lot of them aren't. I mean, uh, you, do get, you do get the odds one or two, the ten-year-old Halo kid but, um, that screams over the mic, but I mean, other than that, most of them just just casual gamers, so... Uh, but what I do have a problem with... Um, are the ignorant people and oh, let me just adjust myself there we go lovely right yeah ignorant people and uh, these are the kind of people that um, I do meet quite a lot of and they play on uh, they play on Xbox or PS3 and when I mention I play on PC like her PC poor graphics and uh, they, they can't actually understand when I when I you can try to explain to them that uh, PC actually the graphics are better they they can't grasp the concept, um, and this video is basically hopefully to reach out to some of them people and just to explain why why I choose to play on PC, the advantages of playing on PC, the disadvantages, and basically why I prefer it to uh, to consoles. So yeah, I don't have a problem with any of you. I don't couldn't care less what you play on, but this is just uh, why I do this, and hopefully it might persuade some of you uh, to get this. So the reason I'm doing this video basically is because I do my gameplay videos as you know if you're a subscriber to JT Gaming and uh, if I didn't put it here I'd just start ranting about it through all my videos so I'll just be able to set so this is it, this is basically to stop me ranting about it through my videos so I've got my cup of tea, got my camera, I've got plenty of, uh, plenty of minutes so uh, off we go. Now the first reason I play on PC is the graphics. Now, this some people are really surprised by this. Some people think that uh, PC graphics are poor, and uh, yes, uh, I mean if you go out and buy a three hundred quid uh, laptop from a shop, then you're not going to be able to play games. Um, and that that is actually disadvantage of PC gaming: the cost. If you want a good setup, you have to pay uh, pay a few quid for it. But um, we'll get onto that in just a minute. So yeah, the graphics. Um, if you are a PC gamer, you'll know what I mean when I say that the graphics card or the graphics chip inside an Xbox, which is the more powerful graphically of the two, the chip is the equivalent to a 7800 GTX. Um, that is extremely old, extremely slow. Um, the 7800 GTX, uh, when they release graphics cards for PCs which give you good graphics performance, they come in generations. So since the 7 series, the GTX 7 series from NVIDIA, so you have the 7 series, you have the 8 series, you have the 9 series, you have the 2 series, the 4 series, and now the 5 series. And the 5 series has been out a little while now as well. So that's about 7 generations difference. That's uh, that's ages. Um, which, I mean, the Xbox has been out ages, so you, you can expect that. As, uh, but um, it basically means uh, that the consoles aren't able... Although you may think they are, they actually can't produce uh, 1080p HD, and in most cases they can't produce 700, uh, sorry, 720p HD. This is what happens is they, it just upscales it, so it gets an image this big, just stretch it to make it this big. Like when you sweat, when you stretch an image that is small, it, you don't actually you, you lose quality when you do that. Uh, like for example, Modern Warfare 2, the native re resolution on that game on console is 400p, so that's that's very small. Um, that's like SD kind of quality. So um, whereas on PC you can play it because uh, PC is scalable, it can actually play at any resolution without losing quality. So I play at 1080p. Some people like some people have better monitors of uh, this size that can play over 1080p. Some people who are rich have like six screens set up um, that has this amazing. It's it's like a surround effect. It gives you uh, it uses per your peripheral vision. And that's uh, it's an amazing effect if you're completely rich and you don't have anything else to spend your money on. 
So yeah, the PC can provide better graphics and in games such as uh, Black Ops or Call of Duty, you don't get that so much uh, because it's mainly designed for console and then ported over. But when you get the likes of Battlefield 3, which is coming out soon, that uses the new Frostbite 2 engine, you're really going to see the difference. The physics, the uh, that will make the destructive environments in um, in Battlefield 3 will make use of the physics, the, the better physics on PC. It can render the textures better. It can uh, better. Well, sorry, consoles don't have anti-aliasing, and that's basically where you have edges. Uh, if they're not anti-aliased, they they sometimes get jagged, like when you do a line in like MS Paint, uh, a diagonal line. There, it's kind of a bit jagged. Uh, with anti-aliasing, it smooths it out. Uh, there's lot, there's lots of other factors to consider. Um, I mean, resolution means nothing in my opinion. It's more about the texture quality and rendering. So uh, yeah. So yeah, on from graphics. Um, Right, the keyboard and mouse. Now, uh, this is a bit of a controversial one. Um, a lot of people prefer game controllers, and I can see why. I mean, a lot of people have got used to it. Personally, I've played games on PC ever since I was a kid. I did have an original Xbox, but um, basically, you have a keyboard and you have a mouse. You control movement with your keyboard, and the other things, you use your mouse to aim and shoot. Um, I prefer this. It's actually. It's a faster input method, so if you actually did rig up an Xbox controller, which you can if you want, you know, it's not you're not limited. You rig an, an Xbox controller to a PC, then uh, you will actually be at a slight disadvantage because you can't aim as quick. So um, that that's one thing. Right, uh, one of the bigger ones for me is uh, longevity and reliability. Xbox and PS3s. Now I repair these, and when you open up, you can see where they break. And I'm not going to lie. Microsoft and, and uh, Sony designed these to break. They knew these aren't going to last very long. The cooling on them is appalling. Uh, I'm not not going to lie, it's appalling. It, it, I don't know how it's allowed to be released like that, but um, in fact, give me a sec. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see this. Um, sorry, I didn't intend on doing this. So. Right, this is my computer, and those are all the fans. Right. It's, uh, you can't really see it very well. Um, I would open it up, but that's just effort. That thing there, uh, with all the fins, is a heat sink. It helps cool the CPU. Now, that's just for the CPU. Um, oh, do I have one to hand? Hold on. Give me a second. This is an Xbox I'm repairing. Um, Okay, doesn't look like I'm about to get to it. But um what you saw there, that was for the uh that was just cooling for the CPU and it was pretty massive. Uh, uh PCs can also have liquid cooling if you uh want to spend that much. But um yeah. Consoles ones don't have anything like that, and that's the reason why they break down. Uh the other reason they break down is the thermal paste gets um it dries up, and the thermal paste basically helps remove the heat from the from the chip into the heat sink to get rid of it. Uh, it when that gets dry and cracked, then the heat doesn't go through it so well. And um, it, it's it's appalling really that this kind of stuff is allowed to be released, but um, you know what it's like. Things like that do happen, um, and funnily enough, they all seem to break just when they're outside their warranty. So I'm not. I'm not going to infer from it, but I'm just hinting the fact that, well, they do break down uh, just after the warranty. Uh, they break down, I mean, most of them break down. I mean, some of you would have had ones for five years, had no problem. Some of you would have one for about a year and it would break. I mean, it's not very good. Anyway. Also, with uh, PCs, when things break, you don't just send them back to uh, Xbox. And if they're under a year, then, if they're over a year old, then you're knackered and you have to pay. 500 quid to get it repaired, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm joking there, it's probably like 200, 300 quid. But um, with a PC, if it breaks, which rarely happens because there's not much, it's generally built better so there's less to break. But if something does break, you find out what's broken, take the part out. Uh, if it's, they tend to have like, the RAM in a computer has an unlimited warranty generally speaking. CPUs have a 3 year warranty, graphics cards, like my one had a 10 year warranty. You know, and you can just send that back, 
get a brand new one. And the great thing is, if you get a, if you've got a ten-year-old graphics card and it uh, and it stops working, and it's just within its warranty, send it off. They don't make that graphics card anymore. They have to send you the newest equivalent. So, yeah. So PC is generally more reliable, and uh, the advantages are upgradable. So although you think. Like you can build a good uh, gaming computer for 500 quid that will do much better than a console. Um, you may think, well, 500 quid—that's a lot of money spent. Well, what you've got to consider is that you're not just playing games on it; you're using it for everything else. You're using it for surfing the web, uh, doing work, whatever you use your computer for. You use it all the time, and uh, so it's an investment, really. Plus, the advantage is, if it does get slow and it doesn't perform as well in games. Um, when like with Battlefield 3, you're going to need uh, quite a hefty system to be able to play it well. All you have to do, uh, you get a new, you just upgrade one part. And it generally doesn't cost that much, and then you sell the old part on eBay. Um, so really, it's I would almost go as far as to say that consoles are a false economy. Uh, economy, economy. They're a false economy because you end up you spend what about 200 quid, I think it is. You spend 200 quid on a console. It may break quickly and it becomes outdated, and it's showing it with like LA Noir. Um, that's like a stress test. It like runs everything at 100 percent all the time. Uh, it's like a stress test for a computer, and it just it can't cope with the modern releases. So X, uh, Microsoft and Sony will probably be bringing out their newer generation uh, consoles soon, which would be good. And on that subject, new generation consoles. Uh, the Xbox has been hinted to use AMD Fusion technology. Uh, I'm not going to go into it, but it's very good, and it will it will basically rival PC performance, which isn't a bad thing because when they release games that can match PC performance, then developers will make games with better graphics, and then PC games will benefit from that. I don't have a problem with uh, uh, consoles being successful. I just want people to know the full facts and know that consoles uh, break quicker that they do actually have worse graphics and um, la lag sorry almost uh, almost finished there without talking about the killer subject lag <sighs> consoles use peer-to-peer -peer technology with matchmaking now peer-to-peer -peer. right it's essentially where you have you have five consoles and they connect together in a, like a ring, and you have a host, and the host has an advantage, and if he he can do like a lag switch, so he can t he can cut off his internet, kill people, cut, like, put his internet back in, and uh, to everyone else they'd be lagging out to the host. Everything's fine, and the host gets a massive advantage. With computers and PCs, you get a uh, it's called dedicated servers. Now you may have heard of these. You've probably heard about us raging about them, especially with Modern Warfare 2, and thinking what are they moaning about. A dedicated server is where you have a computer that's dedicated to providing, uh, to hosting that game, rather than putting it on a home uh, console that's also playing the game. So you have a, com a powerful computer with a business line connection, not like some crappy home connection. You have a business line connection. Um, it's really powerful, and it will mean that there will be minimal lag, and the lag will be based on how far you are away from the server rather than on uh, the host, how laggy the host is. So it means that there's a lot less lag and there's less, there's no advantage to anyone. Everyone has the same amount of lag. And that is, uh, that's the vital thing right there, lag. Uh, I think, I think I'll cover most things. So I'm probably going to have to add stuff to this description or whatever. Um, I must admit, I did anticipate it to be longer. And before I go, I'm going to talk about some of the disadvantages of PC. Now, I mentioned the setup cost. It does cost a lot to set up. Um, also, when you look at it, I mean, this is, it, fair enough, this is a full tower system. Uh, you can get them a lot smaller. But it's a hefty old thing, so it's hard to move about. Um, I suppose less people use it, so uh, you, don't necessar you can't necessarily play with your friends, which is something I'd like to change, but um, there you go. And really... When you get a PC, you have to know what you're on about. Because if you go to the likes of PC World, it, well, at least in the UK, you go to the likes of PC World, they will try and rip you off out of all your money. And it, don't go there. I, I would never set foot in PC World anymore. Because it's a complete rip off. Um, the staff don't know what they're talking about. They built, they make these pre-built computers which are awful. 
and I would generally avoid any manufacturer because he's so limited then if you buy if you buy one that's pre-built generally speaking they'll stop you upgrading they will stop you overclocking which is where you make uh, overclocking is uh, it's actually quite a big community uh, a PC community and it's basically where you you take your processor or your graphics card and using a thing called the BIOS which is a piece of software um, you make it run faster than it's originally intended um, so it essentially allows you to get um, an 80 quid processor that runs at like 2.8 gigahertz overclock it and with Sandy Bridge you can get them to like 5 gigahertz it's, it's outrageous and um, also you have core unlocking um, so you can get a dual, you can go out and buy a dual core processor and if you're lucky half the time what they do they get to make a dual core CPU they make, get a quad core CPU and disable two cores so all you have to do is re-enable the two cores that have been disabled. I mean that doesn't happen all the time, but uh, a lot, of, like eighty percent of the time, uh, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Sixty percent of the time, you can do that. Uh, so buying pre-built ones don't let you do that. Uh, the cooling isn't as good. They don't last as long. They stop you upgrading. The warranty is pretty limited, and I wouldn't even bother. I wouldn't touch one with a barge pole, to be fair. So yeah, um, thanks for watching. I hope this video has, uh, has let you make a bit of an informed decision when you're weighing up the whole PC versus console thing. I've tried not to be biased. Personally, I prefer PC because better graphics, uh, less lag. Um, I can upgrade it. I I enjoy working on PC, so uh, that's part of it for me. The whole working on the PC, but um, also the community is uh, a lot nicer. Oh yeah. Uh, maps. With consoles you have to buy all these DLCs if you want the new maps. You get them for free on PC plus uh, the community make their own maps which is a, which are normally really good and other mods which are really enjoyed, enjoyable to play and it makes games like COD 4 which has been out years ago still enjoyable to play so I can go on there I can play on these custom maps which I've never played on before custom game modes I can play like gun game all this stuff and uh, it, it's fantastic it's a great community to get into and if you're considering maybe going to PC gaming, I'd strongly recommend it because um, you won't regret it at all. And if you're thinking, if you do buy one, um, if you buy one and you think in five years after going it, well, I can't play these new games on full settings. Remember that console can't play anywhere near the settings you're playing it on. So uh, don't worry, basically. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you've actually lasted this long. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, yeah, I hope it, make, it lets you make an informed decision when you're weighing up uh, what to buy next. Thanks for watching.